Hi, this is Pat McDonald, your host for Vote for Vermont, where our tagline is listening beyond the sound bites. Obviously, we are not in the studio today. We are at the Reynolds Inn Bed and Breakfast in Barry, and we are going to have a tour by Jeffrey and Eric Tupper Giles. Um, and I'm very excited about doing this. The LGBTQIA flag is flying to welcome everyone that it's a safe and comfortable home. Come on in and we'll knock on the door and meet our guests. Hi there. Welcome. Thank you. Oh, hello. Oh, a little Come nervous. on Please in. <laughs> Hi, again, we are now joining Eric and Jeffrey in the library. I love that, the library. We wanted to talk with you both about the house and maybe about its history. And uh, we've been talking when we've been here about the fire and just if you could share with us the history of this amazing place. So the house was finished in 1898 and built by George Reynolds. Mm -hmm. He was a hardware salesman. He had in fact, uh, listed as Vermont's most successful hardware business. So in the late Victorian period, it was fashionable for industrial folks to build their houses closer to where their industries were rather than in the fancy neighborhoods. Mm. So in some ways, Barry has been lucky that the house was built just out of the downtown far enough that it, that it survived to not become a parking lot or something like that. Um, and in fact, behind the house, we have the train that runs through still from the granite sheds. And he had his own train stop here. And the buildings next to us were the original storerooms for the hardware oh, business. Oh, great. He sold Glenwood uh, heating and cooking stoves was one of the specialties. Uh, the business is still around, Reynolds and Son. Yeah. It specializes now, well, it specialized in tools for the granite industry and stuff. They kind of changed from we've seen pictures of the old hardware store downtown and it's kind of fun to see the old prices yeah, and right. stuff but kind of the so the house was built as Barry's most modern home the architect built it specifically as a completely modern residence so think back in time to 1898 Barry Vermont rural Vermont right. this house when it was completed had electricity and hot and cold running water it had a full laundry service in the basement, kitchen with its storerooms, and each of the bedrooms had its own plumb sink with hot and cold running water. Oh, how fancy for the time. Yep. Nice. And by 1900, it was connected to Barry's first phone line. Excellent. And this was a single family. Yep. It yes. wasn't uh, rented out, right? There was a yep. single family. Wow. Sing single family home. It uh, was built for George, his wife, and their son. Whoa, this is a big house for uh, yes. three people. Sadly, one year after the house being completed, Mr. Reynolds passed away. Oh. He was in his 50s. Mm -hmm. So his hardware business was taken over by his son. And so his son lived here and then was married and had three daughters and they all lived here together. Um, we have pictures of the Reynolds daughters in various automobiles. So the family loved fast horses, uh, carriages, and cars. And nice. bicycles. Bicycles. Oh, really? Very yes. nice. William raced bicycles. We, we've seen a couple pictures of him in his biking clothes, and apparently there was a, a bike route that came from Barry to Burlington, and I can't even imagine biking on Vermont's dirt roads back yeah, in the Yeah, right, day. exactly. I didn't think about that. Yeah, it wasn't No paved. pavement, no. Yeah. yeah. It was like Route 2, I think, was the only route they had then. Cool. So we, we were lucky in some of the research we did on the house. The, the Barry newspaper in 1898 did a walk through and write up about the house. So we actually have the article, and it describes every room in the house, what its wood species is, what it was used for, oh, who laid the foundation stones, who did the decorating, um, describes that when the house was finished, it was finished in September, they were here in October, and that Barry had just completed the sidewalks in front of the house, but the lawn had not been put down yet, and it talks about that aspect. So this must nice. have been a bustling end of town, oh, back when sure. you had the trotting park where Spalding is, yeah, right. and the this was its own little 
Well, you've area. got a lot of sheds back there yep. now. So that, uh... We've seen pictures of South Main Street, and it had the most beautiful giant elm trees just oh, really? over, over it. it oh, was, I love that. Yeah, love it was that. beautiful. Yeah. So then we have the fire. 2014, uh, the fire happened. Yep. That was tragic, because this is, I mean, of course, now it's beautiful, but when you go by it, it's just such... It Which looked so terrible look for at, so long, yeah. all boarded up and just like, oh, it, it derelict. Sat, it was under contract being sold when the arson happened. Yeah. So that Barry had that year some arsons in abandoned or vacant buildings. I remember that. Yes. Exactly. Um, so this one, the fire was on the back porch of the house. And according to the firemen, the they were 10 minutes from losing that end of the structure. Wow. Thankfully... For the house, I guess the fire was on the kind of business side, the kitchens mm -hmm. and stuff. So this part of the house was mainly smoke damage. Um, so it was able to retain a lot of its character and stuff yeah, like that's that. Great. Yeah, because we were talking before about the woodwork and um, it's just hard to find people that can even do that anymore. Yep. So one of the cool things we found in the carriage barn up in the attic were lengths of boards that were unused trim pieces from the house. There were various door oh, casings. Really? And in fact, part of the roof needed to be replaced. And they had custom knives created for all the different molding profiles. Well, they didn't have to use old wood that had been painted a hundred times. They actually found lengths of it up in the attic and were able to take them to a mill oh, and say, great. create us this. So when you're outside and see some of the details, they're actually yeah. exact reproductions. I love that you both love this. Yeah. I mean, that's just great. So how did it become restored and how did you get to become the innkeepers? So I used to be the videographer for city council before I was on city council. And um, Tom had approached me one day. Lozon. Yep, Tom Lozon had said, Hey, we bought the Reynolds house and um, I know that it's always been like you guys' kind of dream to yeah. have a bed and breakfast and run an inn and do that kind of work. And so is this something you'd be interested in doing? And of course, when he said the Reynolds house, I was like already like, yep, I'm ready for this. And I mean, it was funny because when we came into the house the very first time, it was not pretty. I mean, there was paint chips everywhere and the home, homeless people had been in here mm -hmm. living yeah. um, and I won't even go into some of the detail that was <laughs> happened no, but never mind. Um, but I mean there were there were just it was just a lot of trash and different things but in my brain all I saw was the beautiful house like I never saw like it never felt overwhelming to me it was like okay I'm gonna sweep this room today I'm gonna get down on my hands and knees and in fact if you go back far enough in my Facebook, you'll find a, a, a post where I am on the floor scrubbing the floor. And I said, who, who knew it could be so fun to play Cinderella? That's great. Just because I want it, like, I just love this house. Like, this space is just beautiful. And I want, and as a little kid, I always said, I'm going to live in a big Victorian house where I can throw big parties and walk down the stairs in a feather boa if I want. <laughs> and so here we are. That's great. Well, even just be just living here, I just can't imagine just using it as your home. I mean, how fabulous. When, uh, so Tom had talked with Jeffrey about this. Some time had passed. I remember seeing an article in the paper where Karen signed the paperwork right. on the house. And it was her dream to see the house restored. Yeah. So we had a great time working together as a team to do the entire process. She is so talented. Yes. Yeah. and. Great. Hats off to anyone who's willing to invest the amount of time and money into restoring these old houses. Right. Uh, it really says a lot about the Lozons and how much they care about Barry. Yeah. And plus, I think if the Reynolds house would have been torn down, like anyone would have been, you know, run out of town. Well, for is it not? On, I don't know. Is it on the historic register? So we, it is now. Oh. When we started the project, um, we had taught, Eric and I had talked about, well, should we try to do this and get it listed. And then we started working with um, Caitlin in the state, mm -hmm. um, in the historic section of the state. And um, we worked with a colorist for historic colors oh, for the right, outside. Right. Um, and so I met this girl who was doing, I don't know if it's an intern or how they work this, but they have to write um, the, the papers for the historic mm -hmm. to be put on the mm -hmm. um, lists. And 
So we got to go and she and I went up to the um, history center here in Barrie and spent, oh my God, the entire day it felt like there because um, Marjorie Strom, who works there, brought us out all of these things that the Reynolds had donated. So like I got to look through oh. William's uh, Sunday school thing right. and it said, and oh, I thought it was so cute, it said Willie G. <laughs> and so now when I refer to him, I'm like, so Willie cute. G. And um, so we got to see that Leo, stuff that Leon had given. Um, I have I actually took copious amounts of pictures of all this stuff. Um, and one of the things that I found was Cleora Reynolds um, high school yearbook uh, write up. And if we wrote the words that they wrote back then now, it would it's so politically incorrect. It's really? Not even, oh my gosh. Oh. She was a pal to all the guys and oh. she didn't like to be alone. So who was going to be her next case? Um, yeah. It, it's interesting in seeing it though, they predicted when she was in high school that she would be a very successful business person and that she knew all of the latest dance moves and was just, she was one of those that took and always had the best marks and always taking an extra class. So it was an interesting combination of being incredibly successful, right. bright, and popular all at the same time. And back then, that was that was unusual for a woman to yes. have yes. all those attributes. Well, I would and, think. And they even made comment that she was uh, she was really fast on the cement highways. Cool. So we were talking earlier about the Reynolds business. Yeah. When her father retired, it must have been in the nineteen forties. Cleora took on the family business. So you had a woman running a hardware business in downtown Barrie. She had her German shepherds yeah. that she had in the office to protect her and the girls. Yeah. And I've heard stories that when the interstates came through Vermont that she arranged with all the contractors for the heavy equipment and the tools required for that. So I am fascinated that in that time period where women were housewives and factory workers and secretaries. She was a business owner. She love her. And a, and a very male right, dominated Cleora. business. Yeah, so yeah, that's great. Um, it's I, I love that side of the yeah. the Well now family. I know where why the uh, the barn is named Cleora's. Yes. yes. Which we'll get to uh, during the show, but that explains that. Well she was great so, role model. So she was the last living Reynolds in the house. She lived here from the time she was born until the time she passed away at 90 in 1996. She passed away and I believe she or 95 and she was 96 years old. No, she was born in 1906. Yeah. Whoa. God bless her. So Karen did, uh, Karen Lozon did the structural uh, renovations. But who did, I mean, you have got so many, fa when we'll go to see the rooms, so many fabulous lights and, and cabinets and the, the, the antiques you have here are spectacular. Did you do all that? Or? So the, the, the inside work, like the work work, yeah. the lights and stuff, was all a combination. Um, Karen did mo the lion's share of it. Um, we found a few lights that we liked and got them. And um, so in a couple of the bedrooms, the, the center lights, when we first took over the project, they had terrible 1980s ceiling fans with the like grass blades and the oh, like, right. like, right. you know, I as soon as you, them. you know, as you, soon as you turn them on, it's going to go reek, reek, reek and like be all over the place. But we found some really cool antique lights for the rooms. Um, and, uh, but the furnished furniture now, some of it has come after we got here, but a lot of it came from our home. On Hill oh really? Yes. So, yeah. so when when so you, this is sort of your style anyway. Yes. Right. We just sort of fits you. This is the way we lived. Yep. In our other home. I see. Which is basically just a smaller version of this house. It has the same kind of front hall that this has with the stairs and the landing. It has a back set of stairs that was would have been used for like the the house help. Um, all hardwood floor. Like so, it's very similar. So yes. I like that phrase, house help. House help. We should all have house help. <laughs> I, it, 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 you're not joking. <laughs> yeah, so especially this house, it takes a lot to keep it, it does. looking good. Um, and, and it's funny because everyone's like, oh, it's so beautiful in here and everything looks so clean all the time. And 
in my head, I'm like, okay, thank you. Yeah, right. And then work. I and then I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, okay. And then there's 20 things that I didn't get to before you got here. Right. right. Well, fortunately, it's also beautiful. You're not you're not looking at the the detail details, so you get a pass on that. <laughs> That's good. So, uh, is there anything? Because I'd love to take a tour of the house before um, our time is up. Oh, I but I do know you want to do a shout out to oh, the yes. coffee, which is fabulous. May I ask? So yes. when we first started this, one of our our main goals was to work with people who are local and Vermont. Like we wanted to make sure that we were very Vermont centric when we anything we did. Um, we didn't want to use big companies because it's just I, I I'm a firm believer of the. You buy local, it strengthens your local economy, which actually strengthens the national economy, but you have to work locally yeah. to start I'm it. big on farm to plate. Love going to restaurants that advertise farm to plate and you read the eggs came from mm -hmm. Pat McDonald's farm down the street. It's just fabulous. Yeah, so, um, so we tend to, we don't buy a lot of furniture outsourced like Terry at last time around. Um, the coffee, which is amazing. Uh, comes from Brave Coffee in Waterbury, and he's got a website, and you can order his his coffee online. But he came, and he was very helpful. Like we told him what we liked and didn't like in co didn't like in coffee, and now it's like we're we're this is our coffee. Yeah, and you're hooked. Yes. Well, it's great. I'm going to go look it up myself. So in this room, the ceiling light is the ceiling light that's always hung in here. Mm. Um, I'll put in a plug to Barry Electric. Mm. They're great, aren't they? So our electrician, the, the whole house has been rewired, all new plumbing, everything. The, the walls though, interestingly, they'd been wallpapered, but we didn't have to go all the way down to the studs. The plaster is still the original plaster and stuff. Wow. Um, but in doing the electrical work, our electrician was hesitant, I think, like most electricians are to use anything old. And we didn't want anything from a big box store here at the yeah, Reynolds house. Right. So we wanted to reuse as many light fixtures and things that we could. He, of course, pointed out that nothing's up to code and how are you going to do that? So Michael down at Barry Electric restores old fixtures. They have all of yeah, this stuff. Right. So if you're doing work in your house and you have a beautiful old antique ceiling fixture or lamp, take it someplace. And for less than you could buy a new one, you can have the old one refitted. So we were really lucky to have some of those fixtures that survived. Um, the sconces on the wall behind you came from one of the bedrooms upstairs. Oh, wow. We just kind of liked it here. And then the other, most of the layout of the house is the same. So when we walk through, we can uh, just the house feels very much the way it did. This room has the biggest change, really. This, when, when the house was first finished, this was a bedroom. And wow. in the 1920s, it became more of an office than a bedroom. And this wall here originally was a closet. And sadly, Vermont winters are not friendly to vacant houses. And this house has two different flat roofs on it. And so mm, it has uh, a big cast iron roof leader yeah. that runs right through the center of the house. Well, they froze. Mm -hmm. And so this room had a lot of water, water damage. damage. Plus, right. there are two bathrooms above the ceiling oh, of this great. room. And so this room, when we were looking at what to do, we said, we'd love to have a bar in the library. And we, of course, didn't know what we wanted it to look like. We just told the contractor, make us something that looks like it fits in the house. So this curved front and paneled look was what he created for us. We should give a shout out to him. What oh yes, business? Trim Schwinard is amazing. Oh great. He, um, it, this looks like it was here always. Yep. Yes, you know? well that's what I told, I said, all I want you to do, I said I want a rounded front and I want it to make it, I want it to look like it's been part right. of the house forever. Yeah. And he asked me to do a sketch and I'm like, I don't like, I, I can see it in my mind but I couldn't right. like put it down on paper. He could not have done oh, a better job of getting what was in my head out of yeah. my head without me doing much of anything yeah. but describing what I wanted. That's great. And you told us before that a lot of the uh, glass glassware is just gifts from people that wanted to help uh, help you decorate and, and help their, their stuff be part of your house. Yes. So um, we have several people um, in, in the city and, and actually just outside the city who 
have antiques who are who are downsizing, right. moving into right. other living situations, and their kids don't want it anymore. Yeah. And they, they're like, I don't want that. Well, so they call us and they said, hey, I have X, Y, or Z. Um, do you want it? And I'm always like, sure, why not? Like, you know, we've got an attic. If we if it doesn't fit right now, we don't want to keep the same things all the time forever. So we'll want to switch, change them up. Um, but the the big thing is they know that we love antiques and that we'll just take care of them and keep them um, beautiful. And so good to keep in mind, especially when you're downsizing, because you're right. My my daughter doesn't doesn't want. I used to try to give her more dishware. I have. I think I have eight, <laughs> eight complete sets of dishware. Wow. Well, I just, I like it. So change them up is great. One of our main dish sets that we use, I actually got from a woman who was helping her mother move into assisted living. And she said, hey, I want you to come to my mom's house. She's a friend of mine. And said, uh, I want you to pick out whatever you want and just put stickies on it for now. We'll get it packed up great. for you. And I said, okay. Well, there was this set of like China dishes that it was pretty. It, didn't it wasn't like masculine like what I like, but it wasn't too like rose petal leaf right. girly either. So I was like, okay, I really like this. Well, come to find out, right. it's the green stamps. It's the blue pattern that everybody had. Like so, people will come over here. Oh, my mom had that, or my grandma had that, or so and so had that. And so since then, people have given us more of it. Oh, that's great. So I think we have finally have a full full set of it now, but. Um, we've gotten the salt and pepper shakers oh, now and awesome. the sugar dishes and the creamers that we didn't have originally because everyone's like, oh, that was the green stamp yes, stuff. Yes, right. I know exactly. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. We saved green stamps in our house when I was growing up. Big deal. That's yep. great. Do you want to... No, the one other thing we have in here that just means a lot to us, we have a recipe card in the bar behind one of the sets of glasses. And during the tours we had a woman come through and she said she had a recipe card from Cleora Reynolds oh, wow. and she showed up a couple weeks later we figured she'd give us a photocopy and she showed up with the recipe card so she was actually in tears when she handed oh, it to I me oh I bet what a memory so we had heard that Cleora didn't like to cook and but we also knew that she loved to make drinks and we had heard great stories about she would entertain. She was phenomenal at making a mixed drink. And the other story we heard was about her going up to the hospital, the McFarland building, yeah. when it was still the hospital, and that her house helper would pull her big Buick out of the, the carriage yeah. barn and load her bar service into it. And she would go up there and, and she had a fellow oh. that she would see and they always knew when Cleora was around because the laughter around was right. it, she'd bring her bar service and make drinks and they'd sit and laugh and have a good time and I thought times what have a, changed a little you can't yeah. do that in a hospital but, but what a great thing to do so yeah. we the recipe card says in Cleora's handwriting I can't cook so and it's a cocktail recipe how awesome so a, have you tried it we oh, have yes. it's, oh, yeah. it's a brandy Alexander oh with perfect. chocolate oh hello yeah uh-huh it's <laughs> delicious great. oh I bet so before we go take the tour, why don't you talk about your bed and breakfast and who cooks? That, that, that <laughs> yes, would be me. Um, if, if you watched the last show we were yes. on with you, you know that I burn water. So I, It's one of my favorite things to do. Jeffrey is more of an extrovert than I am. So he loves the being able to sit at the, the table and, and, socializing, and yeah. stuff. And I love to cook. It's, it's funny how satisfying it is to make food for folks. Yeah. So that's a lot of fun. Um, when we decided to open a bed and breakfast with, and sat and met with Tom and Karen about how to make this happen, of course, we all had different ideas on what we envisioned that to be. We chose to keep the house very much the way it has felt yep. since it was built. The previous owners made a couple changes. They, they added a few bathrooms upstairs where there had been closets or perhaps a corner sink. Mm -hmm. We didn't think that was a good thing to undo because everyone likes having their own yes, bathrooms. Yes, so we, we have five guest rooms and each has their own bathroom. Right. They're all unique. They all have their own you know, personality and right. stuff like that. And we purposely chose not to have suites of rooms. We, 
there's a thing a lot of inns are doing now where they're combining multiple rooms to make a suite and you know perhaps a kitchenette and we wanted it to feel like an old house a home, right? uh, a home yes yeah. and it's been great because we've actually had families come and stay where they've each got their own room yet they get to stay here in a big house rather than feeling like you're just stuck in your own little two rooms and stuff like that so we purposely left the downstairs are all common areas a lot of bed and breakfasts you know have rooms that are closed off and the whole house is just open when you're here at least pre-covid yeah was, right um, so covid must be so hurting a little bit here or a lot a lot yeah. like much of the hospitality industry right now um covid has not been kind right. but that being said we have had um we've been able to very because we have so many rooms if we have multiple guests that aren't from the same pod what we do is we say okay here's where you like this will be your hangout room right. this will be your hangout room you're oh, welcome to right. use these rooms here's your way into this room here's your way into okay. this room so they never have to kind of really cross each other's path right. much um, and they can be very uh, safe That's right. and we um, during COVID we won't rent a room like we let the room rest for a full 24 hours before we'll rent it again so someone checking out in the morning no one will oh, check right. in coming that. right in you time to clean and sanitize right. and all that yes. stuff. so we get to sanitize the rooms and clean them really well between guests so we don't allow like a, a check out in the morning and a check in in that evening in the same room because we just don't want the, the liability and the and this is a great location I'm, I'm assuming you just do breakfast yes. bed and breakfast um, and so there's so many places in town to go get food bring it back or go and eat um, when we started this we have a full commercial kitchen we mainly use it for catering and I, I get to cook breakfast and yeah. bake and do all sorts of fun stuff but a lot of folks asked well are you going to open a restaurant here and our answer has always been no because Barry has a lot of great restaurants right, right. and for me all of our services I don't see the need to reinvent the wheel if we've got someone like we've got a great bakery in town and so why not take advantage of that or with restaurants send guests out where we are within walking distance of downtown and we've had guests especially at least in the nice summer weather that will settle in and then they'll take a walk downtown and grab a bite to eat and stuff like that um, with covid uh, with either the restaurants being closed or people being more cautious you know we've got a nice dining room and so we encourage folks to bring some takeout or have a dinner catered here and stuff yeah. like that so it's it's worked out it's we've not been nearly as busy as we need to be but right. it, it's been bed and breakfast in some ways are lucky i think because folks are choosing to go there it's a little different than just yeah. going to and i think you've become i would become respectful for what you've done and what you have here i, I really... love finding you know where a guest chooses to make themselves comfortable yeah. this room tends to be the spot people yeah. gravitate to. well you've got the the uh, lovely books in the in the bookcase and it's just fabulous I, our last guest i i came through and she was curled up on the sofa oh. you're sitting at she had a she had a little blanket over and she was oh, reading nice. her book and it just made herself at home so made I made her a cup people, of tea and I know when people feel at home that we're doing something right so and she's already rebooked for September for five days nice. that's how at home she felt oh how lovely yes Wait till we get the uh, the fall and the oh perfect well let's go take a tour of sure. this place and um you can tell us all about it. All right, so here we are with uh, Jeffrey and Eric in the lounge. I love the names of these. I'm, and we're gonna go to the music room next, but you have got to take a look at this organ. And, and there's just so many things to talk about. I don't know who wants to tell us about the lighting and the organ, I guess that's you. This was one of the few areas that's been changed over the years in the Reynolds house. The doorway we're standing in Sorry, used to be, it more. used to be a, wall and this ah. was a bedroom um, in the 1920s mrs reynolds passed away and william's wife became the new 
lady of the house, and I think that's when she chose to redecorate this uh, old, outdated Victorian right. house. And they opened this up into these two big rooms we've got now and added the light fixtures. Uh, this room means a lot to me, being a musician, so of course I had to have an organ in here. This is an old SD well, reed organ. Does it everyone? Look well, <laughs> I think it's amazing. In the music room, we have a we have a grand piano, and it was interesting when we were talking with Tom and Karen and thinking how we were going to use the space. We wanted this to be kind of an entertainment spot where if you're having a cocktail right. party and right. stuff. But I knew I wanted to put a piano there. And it's prime real estate for chairs and stuff, but I wanted a piano there. And so our grand piano ended up there in the Tower of the Music Room. And when we were giving tours, one of the folks came through and said, oh, is that the Reynolds piano? And it's not, it's ours, but the Reynolds family always had a piano there. And Leon Reynolds was a music major in college. She graduated from oh. the New England Conservatory. And when she graduated, her father bought her a grand piano and it sat there in the tower. Isn't that, has, did you know that? We didn't said, know that oh, when that's, we set it up. That's a little so, interesting. There have been a few of those sorts of things throughout the house as we've done this project yeah. where it's been like a tie back to the family and so, stuff. So. Behind the camera is Zach Zorn, and his father came by one day, Arthur, who yep. we all know was the music teacher at Spalding yes, for we love Arthur. what seems like a million years, yep. and the music director at Bethany. But he came in, and he's like, you boys have no artwork. And this was on a Tuesday. That Friday, he came back, and he had taken the seats out of his minivan and stacked it full of art awesome. and said, use what you want around the house and so we pretty much have Arthur Zorn's artwork in just about every single room in this house that's now. That's great it, and some of them are just stunning they're all beautiful but some of them are are just fabulous. So. And I love the idea of the, the the juxtaposition of an old house with modern art. That's, that's great that's great you also have to talk about the the lighting because that's just what I love the best. So the chandeliers when we first Move moved in or first started the project were they had a lot of smoke and water damage on them and so each one of these crystals has two crystals to it and it hangs um, from brass pins and all of the brass pins had been uh, corroded and really terrible. Oh, that's what you were talking about before. How yes. did you do that? So, uh, so we took them all off. I cut out all the old brass pins in them and then what I did is I got new brass pins and a pair of jewelry pliers and I sat for hours repinning every single one of these. There is like 200 and, uh, 256 drops per chandelier, plus the sconces I redid as well. Great. Um, and this was like, this was a labor of love, I'll tell you, because I love shiny things. Like if it sparkles, I love it. And so I really, that was a project I really enjoyed. And Eric helped when we had taken all the crystals apart, we washed them with, uh, Dawn and took toothpicks to get all the black out of all the holes and um, well, really... Well, it is well worth the effort. It's just stunning. Um, thank you. And these are the only lights in the house that have incandescent bulbs in them. Every other light has uh, the high efficiency LEDs, but these, these actually have the appropriate bulbs for the fixtures. That's great. And the two here are just, um, they're replicas, right? right? They're reproductions, yeah. yep. Um, in fact, that one Eric bought me for my birthday a few years ago um, when we still lived at our other house. And uh, we brought a lot of our furniture and our lights down here because, I mean, this is, this is our style already. So it just made sense that we would awesome. be here. Oh, he's going to play it. Oh, I love it. Fabulous. Oh my God, for dancing in the music room. That's great. That's awesome. So one of the things throughout the house are these cast iron radiators. They're original to the house. They are all throughout the house and as I mentioned earlier, Mr. Reynolds specialized in Glenwood heating equipment. 
So one of the things people would say to me when they knew we were doing this project is you must have such beautiful fireplaces. You know, a lot of Victorian houses have mm -hmm. them all over. We have one fireplace here in the Reynolds house and it's in the parlor. We'll see that um, Mr. Reynolds didn't need fireplaces in his house because he had this right. huge heating plant. We still have the, there's a hole in the, con the basement has a concrete floor that's original to the house but there's this section where you can see the original, uh, you know, burning. coal burning, you know, boiler was right, down there. Right. And in fact, the basement mm -hmm. under this tower in the music room was the coal storage room. And it says it was designed to hold 100 tons of coal. Wow. That would last a little while. Yes. Yeah. Or maybe it didn't. I don't know. Oh, this, no, we, <laughs> it's a big house. So here in the front hall, the woodwork is quarter sawn oak. Throughout the house, there's a bunch of different species used. In the music room and lounge is flamed red birch. And then the front hall has quarter sawn oak. And the parlor and dining room have bird's eye maple. That's great. Yeah. I must say it all sort of looks the same because that's the way they've um, stained it. Yep. But it's beautiful. Yep. They all have distinct grains, yep. but the colors oh, are all right? very similar. Yep. 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 Interesting. We had do this was absolutely amazing. Um, I hope, I know it's so cold outside, but I hope you'll have a moment to look up at the roof of this house. Yep. The, the facade of the house has three very distinct shingle shapes on, which, you know, pretty common for a Victorian house. But we have these uh, acorn crests on hmm. as one of the patterns, and they go all the way up through the roof. And oh, well, when, we'll be sure to do that. When we redid the roof, since we were having it listed on the historic registry, we needed to redo it in appropriate materials. So our contractor searched around for that acorn shape, couldn't find them, so he had a fellow recreate them here in Barrie. He did? Mm -hmm. Oh, no kidding. And one of his fellows sat in the carriage barn for two weeks straight, dipping shingles to stain them and seal them. That, oh, that's amazing. And then his father, it took about 30 days to make it all of the way around the house because with the three distinct shapes and going around curved surfaces and things like right. that, he, up on a lift, he made everything match perfectly. We have 10 curved windows in the house and the sashes are actually curved glass. And out of those 10, we only had one broken one to replace, but right. that was quite an adventure. We uh, worked with Portland Glass on the Barry Montpelier Road. Yep. They were able to send it out, but it took them four attempts to get it here in one piece they it would arrive fedex and and be broken be broken oh they oh damn That's at, at some point i said doesn't someone think they could just drive to maybe wherever this is and pick it up <laughs> and be safer and, but and pack it or yeah. make sure it did. oh that's great yep. well it's here now it is and, um, good yeah all right let's move on yeah, let's all right on. hey we're now in the parlor and it is equally stunning as all the other rooms that we visited could somebody talk about the parlor this room, the thing that stands out for most folks are the beautiful bird's eye maple pocket doors. Yeah. The, this room and the dining room are bird's eye maple, all of the door trims, all of the doors, and including the baseboards. And nowadays you can find bird's eye maple, but as a veneer, and this entire it's, sections of wood are that. So that's great. this room has the one fireplace in the house. We decided to update it in the spirit of being a modern house and put a gas insert yes. in it. Um, I was looking at that and I thought at first I went, oh, there's a lot of work, but no, no, gas we, is good. Gas, we've got a remote control for right. it so I can set it and leave it. And um, so it's a very cozy spot. A yep. lot of, especially this time of year, folks enjoy curling up and That's, or, or having a drink. I think this is where I would be right here, I think. Yep. Yep. I think as much as I like the library, I don't know, it's just nice with the windows and yeah, I in the um, fireplace. I, I go back and forth. Like I I'll sit in the library quite a bit. I'll sit in here, like especially midwinter, I'm right there. Yeah. Like right. just warm. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so this is the this welcome is the room when you reception room when you come in. Room. Yes. This yeah. was originally the kitchen of the home. Oh, that's interesting where it's laid out here. Well, because that people would come in the front door, right. they would have the parlor. This would be one of the farthest things away from yeah. where they were actually. Yeah, because when we came in this, you said this is not really the main entrance. So, right. Which is where I came in because it just, that's yes. where I parked my car. Interesting. Well, and, and the nice thing about having this entrance is we have tile, we have rugs that people can like 
let their right. their hang shoes their yeah hang up stuff. their coats and then they can go into the rest of the house without ruining the hardwood floors right. and yeah which we haven't talked about but they're fabulous they're they're, they're the they, original floors still yeah really yes yep. yep they're great yep um, so when we started the project this was the fire was in the pantry just on the other side here um, this this room was just black and depressing. The windows were boarded up. Yeah. Um, but this, for me, was where the project all started. So back, it, whichever year it is, because I forget now, at Heritage Festival, we knew yeah. we were doing this project. We had walked through with Tom and Karen. We knew we were doing it. And I had a key to the Reynolds house. So after the parade that afternoon, I came with my maple lemonade and walked down here and let myself in the reception room door into this uh, empty house right. that had suffered a terrible fire and looked around and said, I've got to start somewhere. So I put my stuff down and I walked across the street to Abishan Hardware, got some cleaning supplies and came back over. This room, when we started, there were some kitchen cabinets here on this wall. and. I cleaned off that kitchen counter. I took the cleaning stuff and I found in the, the drawers a notepad and I left a note and said our first clean surface with some exclamation oh. points and a smiley face. And the workers made fun of it ever since. They just thought it was ridiculous in this big house that you clean a surface. Right. Well, fast forward to our tours and we're having Ted Guyette come through. He owns Reynolds and Son or yeah. did until he gave, he passed it down to his son. Right. So he had worked for Cleora since he was 16. He remembers having dinners in the dining room with Cleora for their right. business Christmas party. He said, right here where you have the desk, there used to be a counter here and that was Cleora's little desk space. And she did all of her work there. And I thought how interesting that in this That's giant the house yep. that I chose to tackle the, the work spot. This house is talking to you. Yes. Both of you, I think it's where you belong. It, it very much is. So this, yeah. this, it's funny, this was, as Jeffrey mentioned, the kitchen of the house, but Cleora hated to cook. So she turned the pantry, this little eight by 13 room into the kitchen for this house. Okay. So we kept this, we decided we didn't need a kitchen as the first room you walk into. It's the, this is the carriage house, which is yes. called Cleora's. Yes. And maybe you can explain what happens here. This is Party. our, yes, yes, yes parties. Uh, Party it's central. our big event space. We do everything from, we've done brunches in here in the morning. Uh, it's a great spot for, say, a corporate event. If yes. you want to do like a tra daytime training, because you've got all this natural light. Yeah. Um, or most importantly, having evening events. And we've done everything from birthday parties and memorial services to weddings and you know, well, it's a fabulous space. There's parking right outside yep. the door. Plenty of parking, and um, and it's and you have great restaurants to cater. Yep. Yes, perfect. Um, perfect. We actually have a couple of caterers that are uh, local out of Williamstown. Oh, who do we would have never like found them except that they were a friend of a friend and they were catering. And now because he's catered here a couple times, has started catering more and doing more catering. And it's really, really good. Nice. Um, and his food is, that's part of my favorite part probably of, what? of, of these parties is that a, I get to talk to people and B, they always say eat, eat, yes. eat. And I'm Mind like, you. okay, I can eat. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, that's fabulous. The doors, everything is fabulous here. So the woodwork is incredible. This, this space was the carriage barn for the house. Yeah. It was really, really damaged in the fire. Right. Because it was right on the other side of this. So this was, this smelled like a fire and looked like a fire in here. Plus it was first floor, second floor, an attic. And then there's a basement under ah. us. And Thankfully, they had carpeted over these wood floors. These are the original wood floors for the Amazing. carriage barn. Um, the middle section is new, but another shout out to our phenomenal contractor. He went to a mill here in Barrie and said, I need hemlock boards that are this dimension. And Great. they did it. The, the doors you see in the back were they survived the fire. We looked at it and said, what can we do to make a really great entertaining space? Right. So we opened it up kept the beams and stuff like yep. that. 
Um, like, like I'd mentioned, the doors survived. The funny story about those, the workers were getting ready to paint them one day and Tom stopped in for one of his oh, inspections. <laughs> he looked at them and said, I, we're keep, don't right. do anything. Right. Like they, right. Well, don't you hate walking into homes that have beams and they're all painted? I mean, like, what were they thinking back? Was it 60s, 1960s yeah. Yeah. we did that? I mean, what were we thinking? Yep. I mean, they're beautiful. And these are all notched, I see. Those, those so are that, original. Yeah, so that you can put uh, it, wood It used this to way. have the floor. Like, so, oh, the, so I this see. was this was not open. This was three floors. Oh, I see. The notches were four, but that makes sense. Yep, they were for the this, What you've done room. is fabulous. I mean, it's so open and beautiful. Yeah. And the ceiling, the way they made it, what wood is that? That is a pine with a white um like kind of wash on yeah, it it's great they had to do something up there because we had it all insulated and we have heat and air conditioning yep. in here so which is a blessing in the summertime to be able to turn on the ac and keep cool and what a great place for weddings for yep. any for meetings i mean anything would be yep. great we actually the day that the um granite shed got arsoned um we actually had a party going on in here when the power went out and thankfully, I have like a million candles and little things because right. it got really dark and they still wanted to have their party. And we apologized profusely. Well, you and, can't help that. And they, they, so I just started lighting candles and they started putting them all over the table. It was beautiful. I was going to say very romantic and it very was, lovely. It right? was awesome. Yeah. Nice. Yep. This is great. Everything's even the, the doors. Now, where did the, these? Those, those doors. are not originals, are they? No. They no. are replicas of oh. the originals. Ah. So when we started this project, these were two just generic garage doors. They had the frames and everything on them. Yeah. And having the house listed, we needed yeah, to do something fabulous. historic. And Tom emailed us one day and said, hey, I found this photo. And it's a photo of Cleora Reynolds I don't in know her if you father's can get this auto. Sick. Yeah, okay. Because, go ahead, I'm sorry. So, <laughs> Once we had a picture, we yeah, knew what do it, it used to look like, so we had them recreated. That's great. And, yep. Clara yeah. lived here her entire life hmm. until she passed away, and we've heard from so many folks saying that she would love knowing that the house I was bet. what it is now, and that she, out of anybody, after having a party here, she'd be the first one in the ledger book, and if it was in the black still, that it was a success. So That's great. she loved awesome. laughter and making people laugh and having people happy. And I've heard that she was just generous with helping people out. She's one of those folks that saw potential in people and did what it would oh. give them the opportunity to make she, something of themselves. Too bad she's still not here. We could use a little bit of that yes, uh, these could. days. Lovely. All right, let's move on. We're going to go to the bedrooms now and see what we can see. I'm very right. excited to go upstairs. All right, let's, All right, let's, let's go, go upstairs and uh, take a look at the bedrooms. Okay, we will do that. The things here in the house that we, being an old house, had to fight the fire marshal a little bit on oh, was... Oh, interesting. We were able to keep the original railings, and which are... And why was the, he objecting to that? Because new railings are super oh, high. Higher. Well, and then he wanted to actually wall in the front hall, so it was. Oh, no. So we're like, no, we can't. But I discovered that you know these people a hundred years ago knew what height to do railings because when we were doing tours, we had two hundred plus people come through the right. house for the tours, and a lot of them were elderly and concerned about the stairs. And then once they started up the stairs, these railings are actually at a really friendly height right. to I come up the stairs. Up. Yep. This is great, and this is. Uh... Oh my, I love this. We, oh. this is the Miranda room. We named all of the rooms based on folks involved in the project. So Karen's Miranda's daughter, Miranda. Daughter, yes. yes. I mean, Karen's daughter. Yep. Karen's daughter, Miranda. Yeah. Um, this, is, this is a beautiful room, the carpeting, everything. I was noticing the carpeting. I mean, these are obviously modern carpeting, I would think, but it's, it's got a beautiful them. pattern for could be what they used back then. So when we were looking at stuff, there are a few in the house that are older rugs, um, but and some of them like a couple of, like this one in particular is a more modern rug, yeah. just because we knew this room was gonna get a lot more use and we didn't want to necessarily, we wanted to be able to replace it if something happened. Right. And we didn't want guests to feel like, oh my God, I just ruined like the most expensive <laughs> yeah. rug in the world. 
But the rugs down in the lounge and dining room are antique and vintage really? rugs. Yeah, there's always that But even this pattern, it could be. Mm -hmm. Just from looking at it, it fits in the room perfectly. This bed, um, Terry, down at last time around, knew we had bird's eye maple in the house and said, oh, hey, I think I have the perfect really? bed for one of your rooms. And we happened to see it, a picture of it online right as he was telling us he had it. And we were like, yes, absolutely have to have. That's great. Yeah. Now is this a is this a oh, Mr. Zorn? Zorn? Oh wow, I love the color in here. It's very calming. Yep. It's beautiful. This for the the wallpaper in here was this very loud oh. maroon red flower, big giant pattern, and something about this room I just knew it had to be kind of this blue gray and. It's beautiful. I uh, love it. This room has. One of the original bathroom to the house. The house had two bathrooms, Look one up huge. and one down. I love it. Want me to turn the lights on, Zach? Oh, sure. I love this. Yeah, oh. Yep. So this, when the house was first built, this would have been Mr. and Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Reynolds' rooms. There was a pass-through here that connected to the front room. Mm -hmm. And apparently this was Mr. Reynolds' room. And the reason I know that is a, one of the guests on a tour looked at the built-ins and the way the shelves were configured and said, that's the way the gentlemen's shelves were configured ah. for their shirts and trousers and stuff. Right. So this was his room, the front room was his wife's room, and then in the front hall there's actually a closet that used to be cedar lined for all of her fur coats. Oh, nice. So. Well, we all must have cedar lined for the fur yes. coats, so that's great. <laughs> I don't think people wear them anymore. <laughs> so, and the other thing about the closet is really cool, is it still has the original tie rack in it. Oh, that's amazing. And the original yeah. linoleum oh, on the floor. Yeah, they... Can we get the picture of that? Oh, look at this. Yep, it's still got its tie racks and oh, its awesome. linoleum. It's fabulous. Oh, I see where they are. This is, this is the littlest of the bedrooms in the house. This is the Edith room. But if you look around, we actually have a Another bathroom. This used to be the oh, sewing nice. room, according to the floor plans. But if you come around, they, uh, it's got a full bathroom in here. It's, it's very interesting that they put bathrooms in each of their bedrooms back then. I would think my, my daughter lives in a home in, uh, in Maine that just had one bathroom downstairs. Well, that's all she this She's since had. put it up. To, oh. Well, this, this had two bathrooms, one on the first floor uh -huh. off of the kitchen, and the other one was off of that bedroom, but that bedroom has a doorway in from the bedroom and one from the hallway. Oh, I see. So, so how did, when, who so added the bathrooms? this bathroom used to be uh, accessed from the hallway, and this room would, that was the bathroom for this room. You oh, have I to see. go out and back in. Yeah. Well, when we started the renovations, we kind of all talked about it and thought it made more sense to move the door off the hallway into here, put a doorway between the two rooms. And People really do like to have a room with their own yes. private bathroom yes. for sure yes. all bathrooms just i don't think make it anymore no 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 and this room is on the back side of the house yeah. so there is no street noise from back here That's great. except yeah, it's going quiet. up hill street hill street a little bit but not really it's great awesome yeah. all right oh hello i found my room <laughs> when i rent here when i come here i want this room of course i'm able to fit in the bed but that's beside the point Actually, you'd be surprised. Really? Yeah. Just cuddle up. Yeah. Well, and these mattresses sleep so oh, well. Oh, do they? Oh, nice. We had people who claimed they would never be able to fit in a full-size bed and never sleep comfortably because they have a king-size bed. Yeah. They went back home and they were like, our bed sucks compared to sleeping no at your place. Beautiful. I yeah. love this room. This is mine. So this is the Leela room named after my grandmother. The furniture in here has a bit of an interesting story. It came... Uh, I'm thinking down Chelsea. towards Chelsea on your way down towards right. um, Tunbridge on Main Street there's well there's a bunch of old houses but one of the old houses across from the town square 
the family had lived in it for generations and they were selling the house. None of the kids wanted stuff and the the old fellow that showed us around was in his 80s and he remembered this bedroom set as his grandparents' bedroom set. So he said they uh, none of the kids wanted it and they were super happy to know that it's oh, here it's in Barrie still and it's oh. beautiful, just beautiful. That matches, right? Is it yes. a yep. set? Yes, it yep. is. Oh, the commode set. for oh, it oh, and for the sake, marble's in beautiful shape. It's gorgeous. What a find. Yeah. This room got modified during the construction a bit. This room went all the way to the back of the house and we knew with fire egress we needed a second way to get right, through. To get so out. we made the room a little smaller and the doorway there used to be a little coat, a little closet like the other bedroom oh, we, oh yes right some of the old homes you can't put hangers in because yeah. they yeah. don't quite make it you have to put them sideways yep so this was kind of an unused space over the back stairs and into a storeroom so we made it go you can go ahead yeah, and check it out it's a uh, see the bathroom uh, oh you know it's, they're all such nice sizes so Pat McDonald, Pat McDonald is endorsing the Lilo room. <laughs> Pat McDonald, this is great. Nice. And so how many, what did we see all together? That's five bedrooms. Five bedrooms. Five yep. bedrooms. That's, that's our room. That's your room? Yes. That's great. Yep. So we're here in the dining room and I wanted, um, could you just talk a little bit about the dining room and I mean all the incredible cups and saucers and the things that are hanging? This, I'll draw your attention to the light fixtures in here because I know you've commented about them. Yes, These, every room. <laughs> this chandelier and the two sconces are original to the house. Oh, really? And you can't see it well, but the shades are actually iridized glass. They have a very Art Nouveau pattern to them. What does that mean, iridized? They've got a, a rainbow sort of effect in the glass, even oh, though they look oh, like they're... Oh, I can see that. Yes, yep. it's almost like pearl. Yep. Yeah. Nice. So these survived the fire. The fire was, the pantries on the other side of this built in, yeah. and that's right where the fire was. So this room was black. Um, there's a spot in the floor, in the doorway over there, where you can yeah. see the fire hit the floor, but the firemen somehow saved that's, this. So, so this room was a lot of elbow grease to clean all the woodwork back to being shiny. But It is awesome. I just love everything. I love, as I said before, I love, uh, China and dishes and I have a lot of them at my house. We've we've had a few folks um, you know knock on the door so to speak and say hey I've got my grandmother's teacups and I don't yes. know what to do with them and so we've been adding to the collection in That's here. Right. So well, maybe I can do um, a little adding too. There's room. There is. There is room. There's, well, there's, there's a couple of things that I would take down that are just up because they're up but I would I would much rather see the whole thing covered in teacups. Yeah. They're beautiful, all of them. So the one piece of furniture that is not from our house is actually this dining room table. Yes. Our, our dining room up the hill is much smaller and we have a little four foot diameter table in there. And so here at the Reynolds house, I knew I wanted a big table right. and I went down to see Terry at last time around and said, I need a table that seats 12. He said, all right, it'll take me a while, but I'll find you one. So he called me one day and said, I found your table mm -hmm. and it's this round table, it has seven leaves to it. Oh my gosh, does and it fit it, in this room? It, it opens all of the way out oh, from it and, and... Thanksgiving, I yep. love Thir it. 13 feet long. It oh, it's, um, that, yeah. that's missing in people's lives. Yes. The old, the big dining room with yep. all the people sitting around, that's yep. great. So, so most of the time we keep it a circle so you can fit through the room right. and, but this is where we have breakfast with guests in the morning and, and dinners in the evening and those that's sorts of awesome. things. So. Gentlemen, I can't thank you enough for showing us this amazing place. I really appreciate the time, and I must say all the effort that you've put into this with, with the help of many people. Absolutely, yes. This was meant to be for you both, so come down to the Reynolds house and stay. I've picked out my room, so I hope you pick out your room. It's just great. Thank you all very much. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. And thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next week, and in the meantime, keep listening beyond the sound bites.